the cortex is like what we call like human intelligence. You know, so it's like the, that's like the advanced computer relative to other creatures. Uh, other, other creatures do not have either. Really, they, they don't. They don't have the computer, or they have a very weak computer relative to humans. Welcome, Hare Krishna. I am doing a video today on Elon Musk. He's giving some beautiful insights on just how human beings are underutilizing their intelligence or misusing their intelligence. You'll be surprised as to which way he makes this observation. But I think it's deadly on point and I have some evidence from the Vedic scriptures to back it up. Welcome. If you're new, just hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you know when you upload videos. Thank you for joining me. Let's jump into the video. You know, we currently operate on two layers. We have sort of a limbic, like prime primitive brain layer, which is where all of our kind of impulses are coming from. It's sort of like we've got, we've got like a monkey brain with a computer stuck on it. That's, that's the human brain. <laughs> and a lot of our impulses and everything are driven by the monkey brain. And the, the computer, the cortex, uh, is constantly trying to make the mon monkey brain happy. It's not the cortex that's steering the monkey brain. It's the monkey brain steering the cortex. You know, so. But the cortex is the part that tells the story of the whole thing. So we convince ourselves it's, it's uh, more interesting than just the monkey brain. But, but it's, it's, it's like, it sort of seems like sh surely the really smart thing should control the dumb thing, but actually the dumb thing controls the smart thing. <laughs> His analogy there is to do with the human intelligence is not really available to the animals. And for sure, the human being is meant for greater achievement. And that achievement is not only just that he excels materially, and which he does by a long shot, compared to the animals, but the human being is able to then also determine his or her future spiritually. So that intelligence, uh, which he likens to the cortex, should not be functioning under the whims of the monkey brain. But we find that uh, we are engaging higher human intelligence simply to fulfill the whims of a monkey-like, passionate, naughty. You're working for a monkey, basically. <laughs> and who wants to do that? That's not so intelligent. Like, like, so like, think of like the, the difference in intelligence between your, your cortex and your limbic system is gigantic. Your, your, your limbic system really has no comprehension of what the hell the cortex is doing. Um, you know, it's just literally hungry you know, or tired or angry or sexy or something, you know, and, that's, and, and just, and, and then it, that communicates that, that impulse to the cortex and tells the cortex to go satisfy that. <laughs> so then a lot of, a great deal of like a massive amount of thinking, like truly stupendous amount of thinking has gone into sex yeah. without purpose, without procreation, without procreation. Which, yeah. which, which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of procreation. Well, this point is really brilliant. Humanity has invested so much intelligence and planning and time and money into thinking and planning and establishing ways to satisfy sex desire. And he makes a point which is even more related to higher values of humanity that if it's just sex without procreation then you know what is its fruit what's the reality of it what's the significance of it and of course anyone who think well pleasure mr musk you know we're just trying to enjoy him. so why so much time and energy and resources and thinking power is used to do the same thing again and again when the result is basically understood uh, a little bit of scratching and itch, which is never actually satisfied. So, it's, it's a bit silly. Well, so why are you doing it? Because it makes the limbic system happy. That's why. That's why. But it's pretty absurd, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole of existence is pretty absurd in some kind of sense. Yeah. But, but I mean, this is a lot of 
computation has gone into how can I do more of that with <laughs> procreation not even being a factor. So Bhagavad Gita discusses this also. Krishna is saying that Kamosmi, what which sex life am I? I am Dharma Viruda Bhuteshu. That sex life which is based on religious principles. So it's a very wonderful observation that we as a whole actually maybe investing time and energy into even a system that is also doomed to fail, this material body. Death is coming for it. So any intelligent person who can engage proper human intelligence in preparing for the forward journey of the eternal soul, that is true intelligence. But people generally like the fact that they have a limbic system and a cortex. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete either one of them. They're like, okay, I'll keep them both. That's cool. The limbic system is kind of fun. Yeah, that's what the fun is. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then you, you, people generally don't want to uh, lose the cortex either. Right, so they like having the cortex and the limbic system. Yeah. Uh, and and then there's a tertiary layer, which will be digital superintelligence. And I, I think there's room for optimism, given that the cortex, the, 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 the cortex is very intelligent and the limbic system is not, and yet they work together well. Perhaps there can be a tertiary layer uh, where, where digital superintelligence lies, and that that will be vastly more intelligent than the cortex, but still coexist peacefully and in a, in a benign manner with the cortex and limbic system. We hear from Krishna and Bhagavad Gita the hierarchy of uh, the makeup of a human being, which is uh, stated as uh, the bottom layer is the body, which means the sense is higher than the body is the mind, higher than the mind is the intelligence, higher than the intelligence is actually the living being, the soul. So he wants to put another layer uh, just above human intellect, which would be what is known as digital artificial intelligence, which is supposed to compute and work at a greater, greater speed and uh, have processing power uh, far greater than what's already on board in terms of intelligence. And his observation that what he calls the monkey brain, basically the limbic system, the senses can work well with the higher order of intelligence and mind. But he also is trying to serve the same limbic system and the same cortex, basically the gross body and the subtle body. It doesn't seem that he is aware of consciousness, nor speaks of how consciousness will be served, and especially consciousness is only available in the body for a certain number of years, we know of death. So for that, we have to look at the spiritual understandings like Bhagavad Gita. Krishna has said there that Mama Vangsu Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Manasa Stani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Kashati that the living beings, basically consciousness, are my eternal parts and parcels. So part and parcel means has to serve the whole, uh, just like my finger. It has to do the bidding of the body. If the finger doesn't work for the body, then what's its value? In the same way, being part and parcel of the Supreme, eternally so, then we have a relationship which is unbroken, cannot be broken, and it should be symbiotic, means there must be some service, some connection. So Bhakti is talking about that. So in terms of the science that is being discussed here by Elon, and uh, you know the interviewer, you can see that he's, he's a bit reluctant with some of these ideas coming forward, which are basically diagnosing how we are wasting our human lives on dealing with just the body and its senses. Yes, so Bhakti and its scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, are also solving this puzzle of not wasting human life and trying to give us a combination and a plan that will take the soul beyond the confines of birth and death. 
but to a state of liberation of its eternal existence in relationship to the Supreme. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure you subscribe, share this video with your friends. Follow me on Instagram at Savia the Monk. Catch you on the next video. Thank you for being with us.